Hi everyone and welcome to our next lesson on greenhouse gases. Our challenge today is to be able to describe what the greenhouse effect is and to name two key greenhouse gases. Our aspire is to be able to describe the greenhouse effect in terms of short and long wave radiation and then start to evaluate some evidence for global climate change. So let's start with some interesting information on this. The average surface temperature of the moon is 107 degrees Celsius during the day and minus 153 degrees Celsius at night. But the Earth and the moon are approximately the same distance from the sun. The average temperature on the moon is minus 18 degrees C, whereas the average temperature on Earth is 15 degrees C. What do you think causes that difference? Okay, so it is our atmosphere that causes that difference. There are certain gases in our atmosphere which affect our surface temperature. Those gases are called greenhouse gases and their effect is called the greenhouse effect. You may have heard of this greenhouse effect and heard of it in a negative way. However, it actually is what made Earth hospitable. The greenhouse effect allowed life to evolve on Earth by keeping it at a constant temperature that was suitable for life. And the greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, water vapour and methane. Carbon dioxide, we learned in a previous video, has some negative effects. So we're going to link these two ideas in a little bit. But first, I think about how the greenhouse effect actually works. And it's similar to how cars heat up really quickly on a hot day. So there's a little video that explains this really well, so I'm going to play that for you. Every night here on Fox 9, we're going to take a closer look at the weather and maybe learn a couple of things at the same time. Tonight, a really serious topic, actually, one that, I mean, Scott, we talk about this every summer. It's about why you shouldn't leave kids or pets in cars in this kind of heat. Yeah, certainly. It's, it's actually it's the greenhouse effect is really what it is. And what's happening is, is that all that energy from the sun is going into your car and it's not making its way out. So basically what you have is what this is, short wave energy going in. So on a sunny day, it's going in through you. You can block out a lot of the, the glass will tend to naturally block out a good deal of UV radiation. So it's difficult to get a sunburn, by the way, if you're curious about that, especially the windshield blocks more UV and then the side windows do. But it's still what we call short wave energy getting in and that long wave energy can't escape. The sun heats solid objects. And so it's heating everything inside the car, the dark, dashboard the seats and that heat is just radiating in but that energy can't escape so that's that greenhouse effect and so we're talking you get 85 degrees outside not even that hot it can go to 140 inside the car so again it seems obvious but obviously there are times unfortunately we have to let people know what is going on so common sense indeed you just do not want to be outside can't even just roll the windows down a little bit it's just plain too hot all right, Scott, good advice. I mean, I know it's something we talk about all the time, but yeah. this time of year, I have to reiterate it. Appreciate right. that. Well, dangerous malware. Now, there is lots of different wavelengths of radiation that are traveling through space, and some of which are emitted from our sun, but we're going to group them. And we're going to talk about just short wave and long wave radiation. Okay, so greenhouse gases, stop long wave radiation from the sun being transmitted through the atmosphere but allow short wave radiation to pass through. Now that short wave radiation has a warming effect on the surface of the earth which will then re-emit long wave radiation. But the long wave radiation is absorbed by those greenhouse gases again and it's not transmitted which has an overall warming effect on the earth. Now, for a long time, this kept our temp the Earth's surface temperature 
reasonable and it kept it within a pretty constant range. However, due to human impact on the atmosphere and the increased amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, more long wave radiation is now being absorbed, which has led to global warming. So I want you guys to take a little bit of time now, pause this video if you need to, and I want you to have a go at answering these two questions. I want you to first of all, describe the greenhouse effect in terms of that long wave and short wave radiation. Then I want you to explain why the greenhouse effect has become a problem on Earth. Pause now and resume when you're ready to carry on. So let's have a look at your answers then and compare them to ours. So first of all, describing the greenhouse effect. It's really key that you use that phrase in long wave and short wave radiation here. So short wave radiation passes through the atmosphere that then warms the earth and is re-emitted as long wave radiation, which is then absorbed by those greenhouse gases. Then explain why the greenhouse effect has become a problem. As we just mentioned, higher levels of those greenhouse gases increases the amount of long wave radiation that is absorbed, which causes global warming. So let's start to look at ways in which humans have contributed to the increasing amount of carbon dioxide and methane in this atmosphere. At the end of this information, I'll give you this table back and give you a little bit of time to have a go at filling it in. If you need more time, pause the video by all means. First, let's work, go through carbon dioxide. Some of these are really obvious, some of them not so much. So first of all, burning fossil fuels particularly in power stations, increases carbon dioxide levels. We are trying to reduce how much we rely on those fossil fuels for our electricity, but we are still using them quite a lot, especially in winter. Also, the majority of our vehicles still burn petrol or diesel, so they are also increasing carbon dioxide levels. The alternatives aren't accessible enough yet to replace all of our vehicles. Also, when, we, when deforestation happens, a lot of the time it's done by burning down forests and that is going to increase the carbon dioxide levels, firstly because of the combustion of the wood, but also because trees take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, so you're also reducing how much carbon dioxide is taken in. Um, also, there's been some instances recently where forest fires have got out of control and that's been quite high, highly publicised in the media. So, so bear that in mind that there is two effects that's going to have. Right, so me first of all, landfill actually releases methane. Landfill is how the majority of our household waste is disposed of. Um, so that's another reason why we should be recycling as much as possible to reduce the amount of landfill that we are making. Um, the process of growing rice actually releases methane and that as the population of the planet increases, we are growing more rice to feed those people, which means we are cultivating more rice and increasing the amount of methane in the atmosphere. It's also the same for cows and cattle. So the more cattle we are farming, the higher amounts of methane are being released into the atmosphere. It's worth saying now that methane as a greenhouse gas is actually 84 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20 year period, um, which means it causes more of that, that long wave radiation to be absorbed and ha have a higher warming effect. The difference is that actually more carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere, so that offsets this difference slightly. Right, so now that we've gone through those, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to have a go at summarising how humans contribute to the levels of these gases in the atmosphere.
Okay. So Firstly, for carbon dioxide, burning fossil fuels, then burning forests during deforestation, for methane, the use of landfill and increased farming of rice and cows, and also mining fossil fuels can also release methane. So to summarise the effects of global warming, first of all, there is ice caps melting and that is linked to rising sea levels. There's also a loss of habitats due to, first of all, us losing land due to those rising sea levels, but also because of temperature changes happening because of this change to weather patterns. There are other effects as well, but these are the four main ones for you to remember. Now, in terms of evidence for global warming, I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail on this. However, there are some things that you may be asked to look at. So first of all, temperature records. We have got temperature records for several years showing that increased temperature. We can also use ice core data. Now, ice core data, when ice freezes, bubbles of gas are trapped within that ice and they can be analysed to give us the percentage composition of the atmosphere at that time. We also have ice cap and glacier data where we can view it and as you can see on the GIF at the moment that is the ice caps between 1980 and 2010 and whilst there are seasonal fluctuations especially with temperature records and ice cap and glacier data we can still see an overall pattern. For a piece of evidence to be considered by scientists, it has to have gone through a process called peer review. Now, that means once a scientist has discovered something, that experiment or that situation is reproduced by other scientists. They reproduce it in exactly the same way to check that they find out the same thing. It's essentially the scientist's version of checking your homework with your friend. Now, let's have a look at what this could look like in an exam question. So, let's bug this because this is a slightly longer question. We've been asked to justify. Now, when we are justifying, we are using evidence from the information supplied to support an answer. So, let's have a look at what we are justifying. We are justifying a statement made by a student and to justify why it's only actually partially true. The student stated that the graph showed that the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causes global temperature increases. Now, if we look at the graphs, the first thing we need to look at is the axes. So, on graph A, we've got the concentration of carbon dioxide in parts per million. And on graph B, we've got the global average surface temperature. So the first thing for us to look at is the patterns on those two graphs and where do they match up and what are the limitations of those graphs. I'll give you some time to have a go at it and then we'll give you the mark schemes. So let's check your answers. Although the temperatures fluctuated throughout the graph, the general trends of those graphs suggest that as the temp carbon dioxide concentration increased, the global surface temperature did increase also. We can see this as in 1900, the carbon dioxide concentration was 300 ppm and the surface temperature was 14.8 degrees C. Whereas in 2000, the carbon dioxide concentration was 370 ppm and the surface temperature was 15.2. So what that that answer's done there is it's taken two pieces of data to, to justify that trend and justify that those patterns do have a general matchup. That must be due to some increased burn, burning of fossil fuels from 1900. And as we know, that's when the Industrial Revolution really started. So that's why we're seeing those temperature increases from that point. 